Sometimes in our life, we hope and we wish for something so badly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a different plan for us. One very special and unique thing about what Allah teaches His believers in the Quran is absolute trust in Him. And that if things don't come the way that we expected or hoped for, then to put our trust in Allah and know there is a bigger plan. Some people, when they get married, they can't have children. They try, they stay years. Some people, they wish for a certain gender, maybe a boy or many boys. Others, they want many girls. Some people say, I wish to have a boy first, then a girl or the other way around. Some people, they have many daughters, let's say, and wish that they could have a son. They keep trying and Allah subhanahu wa just keeps giving them girls. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Your parents, your children, you cannot know which one of them is more beneficial to you. The majority of people, past and present, they wish for a son more because they think that a son will be more beneficial materialistically and uh, in every other way more than a girl. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his wife Sarah. He reaches the age of almost 80 years old, according to what the commentators of scholars said. And he was yearning for a child. He was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a child among the righteous. Allah says, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he left his people, he said, I am going to my Lord in his path. He will guide me. And then he asked Allah, said, my Lord, grant me a gift of a righteous child. Allah says, we gave him good news of an obedient and righteous child. If you paid attention, the verse did not say whether Ibrahim asked for a son or a daughter. He said a righteous child. And that's what really matters. Ibrahim and Sarah had grown old in age. Sarah alayhi salam had passed the age of menopause and became unable to bear children. In fact, she was never able to bear children. She was always barren, even in her younger days. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not will for them to have any children all this time. Secretly, Ibrahim alayhi salam, as we said, was yearning for a child. A child is part of the beauty of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does say that in the Quran. Sarah alayhi salam felt sorry for Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So she gifted him her, her servant woman, Hajar alayhi salam. Sarah alayhi salam did not look at this as a sacrifice in the meaning of a loss, but she looked at this sacrifice as in the meaning of a growth. Ibrahim alayhi salam was very sensitive to the feelings of his wife Sarah alayhi salam, and not one day even crossed his mind to mention to her, how about you free Hajar and gift her to me as a wife? We don't find these words coming out of his mouth in the entire verses of the Quran or in any hadith. So from here we understand that there was extreme love, connection and feelings for each other's sensitivities. When Prophet Ibrahim married Hajar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him a son and he named him Ismail alayhi salam. Let us now turn our attention back into the household of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his wife Sarah. Sarah alayhi salam was extremely loyal to Ibrahim as we said and Ibrahim alayhi salam was extremely loving to her. One day, an unknown group of about three men knocked on his door. He opened the door and did not recognize any of them. They said, Salam, which means peace. He said, Salam on qawmun munkarun. Peace to a people who, I don't know who they are. Allah then said, he did not wait a single moment. فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ 
he went straight to his wife. And within a few moments, he came back with a fully cooked small calf, ready for all his guests to eat. He did not question where they came from. He did not even ask too many questions, except he knew that they had come to seek some shelter or support or some food. And it is the right of every Muslim that when a guest comes to you, and of course you feel safe that your guest is coming as a guest, to give them service for three days and three nights. After that, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, it becomes a sadaqah. At the same time, Allah does say in the Quran, if guests go to someone's house and the people of the house say, now's not the time, or they want to visit, then Allah says, then don't go and be wise and have self-respect. However, there is a goodness in serving the guests. And the Prophet ﷺ did say, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmin akhir falyukrim daifa. Whoever truly believes in Allah and the hereafter, be generous and good to their guests. There is so much goodness that comes out of it and blessings which you find as a result of it. Ibrahim ﷺ insisted on his guests eating. He wanted to make sure that they eat and they are treated well. So he brought the food closer to them and asked them a peculiar question. Do you not eat? But when he saw that their hands weren't reaching their mouth, he became afraid. When they noticed Ibrahim salam's fear on his face, they immediately told him, La takhaf, don't be afraid. We are messengers from your Lord. Inna ursilna ila qawmi Lut. We have been sent to the people of Lot. His wife was standing there, Sarah, and she smiled and laughed. Why did she laugh? She laughed and smiled, being happy that the people of Lot, because they had spread so much corruption and immorality for years and years, and they weren't changing, she was happy of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was now going to take care of the situation. However, Ibrahim السلام, was still fearful of this situation, for his nephew Lot was there. السلام. When Sarah السلام, gave that expression, it turned the attention of these men to Sarah. These men were angels of Allah. It is said that they were the angel Jibreel, Mikael, and Israfil السلام. They immediately said to Sarah, you will have a righteous son named Ishaq, and after Ishaq, you will have a grandson named Yaqub, and you will live to see them both. She slapped her face and screamed or shrieked, وَصَقَّتْ وَجْهَهَا And she said, عَجُوزٌ عَقِيمٌ I am an old barren woman. How can I have a child while I am in this age? And they said to her, أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Are you amazed about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do? Oh no, Allah has brought blessings upon you, O oh family of righteous people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you enlightened and blessed with this new gift. So my brothers and sisters, no matter what, everything happens at a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows is best for us. We may make dua for something, but Allah gives us something else. Always assume of Allah well, for you never know where the good is and where the bad is. But we are servants of Allah, relying upon Him bi idnihi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and wisdom. Millata abikum Ibrahim